Good. Start. Okay. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to the hands on uh, test drive OpenStack networking. Um, we are directly, like, for a few minutes, we are going to go through the logistics, accessibility of the VNC viewer and uh, about the documents, we are going to touch a little bit on them, and then we are going to let you know about the test cases, which are, we are going to walk you through here live demo. Um, so, bear with us. So in regards to the VNC viewer, you can see uh, you have got an IP address and a password on your uh, sheet. Uh, so one thing I would like to let you know, if you're not able to complete your uh, test plan uh, in this session, or uh, you are uh, unable to access, uh, please uh, s let us know about it. We'll scan your uh, information, and then uh, we'll follow up with you uh, by <coughs> tomorrow in regards to um, acknowledging that we have got your request. And coming Wednesday, we will make sure that we provide you an ignition uh, sandbox uh, to try it in your lab environment and wherever you are comfortable. A uh, few logistics about the VNC client. You can see uh, VNC client. If you have VNC client IP address uh, colon 5901, it should take you into the screen. Uh, put in the password, and uh, you should be seeing two screens there. One is Plum Grid Ignition, and then there should be two web browsers there. Uh, if you have a MacBook, you can go. To if uh, you have a MacBook, uh, then open up the Safari browser. Uh, VNC and the port 5901 password. It should work. Uh, and if it's a PC, uh, I have heard a few people have some questions. Uh, but uh, we tested it. Take the remote desktop connection. Uh, you basically s type in the IP address and then select VNC-any. That's an option you get. And then you put the IP address in 5901 again with the password. And it should take directly uh, into the, have the session. Down have the downloaded the test plan? And yeah. So one thing we would like to uh, mention is uh, please go to this link. Uh, it's simple, plumgrid.com slash forward slash plumgrid dash ignition slash sandbox dash VNC. And uh, you will see a few documents on the right hand side. These two documents, uh, these are the test plan and the user guide. So have a handy copy of it. We are going to walk <coughs> you through these uh, test plan and the user guide. And also, like uh, after session is over, because we just have 35 to 40 minutes, uh, you can keep uh, continuing with the test plan. And if you have questions, you can uh, send an email to us or uh, 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 put a support ticket for us. Uh, I'll say let's leave it for two minutes, sir, if you go back. Slide back, yeah. So I'll just give uh, like a half a minute, and then we'll move. Uh, it is, I think so. If it's not, then we'll make sure. Uh, moving forward, uh, what we are going to do uh, in the OpenStack uh, lab today, uh, we are going to create some OpenStack tenants. As you can see, we'll go into the console. Horizon, we'll create a networks there, and then we'll create a network topology for a three-tier app. Uh, then uh, we'll jump into the Plum Grid console view to show how the mapping works and what are the things you will see in regards to the topology which is being built out there. Uh, then uh, we will basically go and uh, look at the multi-tenant environment which has been created. Uh, then few tests in regards to the external connectivity, like how you can connect into uh, external world and uh, your uh, OpenStack uh, environment. And the last one is a uh, few about uh, security policy enforcement, so you can uh, turn off and turn on and see which ports and which people <coughs> communicate. So we'll do a bang. Uh, all yours, Omar? Okay. So did everybody get a chance to download the copy of the test plan, at least? Can people raise their hand? If not, I can. Say, stay on the screen because that, that is going to be something that is going to be needed for you guys to go and do the lab in a, in a self-paced manner. Yes, sandbox user guide and sandbox test plan. Test plan is more important for 
right now in the follow-up session, right? and so you guys need to use it later on. And just to let you guys know, don't worry about it. 30 minutes is generally not enough to complete all these activities. All of you on Wednesday will get an invite from us to actually sign up for this uh, sandbox environment. You will have an access for three days. Same test plan, so you guys can go through it. Idea is we want people to get comfortable and familiar with how do you go and uh, configure networking in an open stack environment. That's the main idea. Yeah. And also to add, uh, we can basically schedule it according to your uh, calendar also. Like yeah. uh, we'll contact you, you can tell us like what days and times you want uh, the three day access. So we'll basically enable the environment just for that specific time. So it's, uh, it's according to your uh, uh, calendar and the availability. I know internet connectivity was a little bit spotty earlier. Just want to show of hands. Yeah. Still is? OK. That is unfortunately out of, out of our control. Any luck with anybody being able to download the, the test plan yet? OK. So let's go. Essentially, there are two documents, right? The first one is the, is the user guide. In the user guide, essentially on page three, it just talks about the environment. You need to have a, some kind of a remote access, such as a VNC client, to be able to access this instance, which is a full-fledged an OpenStack uh, uh, installed with PlumGrid, right? running as an instance in an, in an Amazon environment. Obviously, this is not designed for scale or performance testing, but you will be able to go and configure, test a full functionality of uh, OpenStack networking and various aspects of our platform as well. Right, so there is a OpenStack controller, a PlumGrid director, which is the management console of our solution running. These are the two interfaces that you will access. And then we have a compute node, what we call as a PlumGrid edge. And then there is also a PlumGrid gateway, which allows you to connect from this virtual network infrastructure to the internet or an IP, legacy IP environment. Okay? This is just the background. This is the test plan. I will. Uh, go along with you guys, right? Again, if you guys have a test plan, you guys want to start doing it, by all means. People have different background, different experiences. I don't want to hold back the, ho the whole class. But essentially, these are the six or seven different exercises that we you know, let the customers come and, and, uh, and conduct these exercises while they access their our, our ignition environment, right? You will access the setup. You will create basic tenants. First, you will log in as an OpenStack uh, cloud provider. And you will log in as a tenant, and you will create a three-tier uh, application topology. And then you will do it in a multi-tenant environment, essentially meaning multiple tenants having duplicate IP addresses, yet they're going to be completely isolated from each other, no conflict with each other. Then we will allow you to uh, make external connectivity, where you will launch an instance, and that instance will be able to connect all the way to, say, Google.com. right? And then if time permitting, again, we will go and configure the, the security policies, which allows you to configure ex essentially equivalent of layer four access control list in an OpenStack environment. Okay. For this session today, we will be using OpenStack Horizon primarily as a console to go and configure. But we will go and also look at the PlumGrid console to look at some of the views and uh, you know, look at the statistics and your topology, how your, your networks look like. Okay. So with that said, the first, again, I'm going to scan through this one a little bit faster. The first one is just accessing the environment. And I'm going to go open VNC on Safari. VND will not work. All right. Yeah, so let me actually go ahead and this is internet is going to be. Login. 
First, I'm going to log in as a cloud admin. So again, my apologies, the internet again, it's uh, slow, so it's going extremely slow. The default, the password that we have set for you is admin change me. And you're logged in as an OpenStack cloud provider as an admin. One of the tabs that I would like you guys to now look at is the under the admin, go under the identity panel, and we will go ahead and uh, create different, as a cloud provider, you're gonna create tenants, you're gonna create different users, okay? So we, for this exercise, we will create one project and, not one project, we'll actually go ahead and create three of them. Click on create project, Let's call it tenant one. Admin, change me on the horizon, should work. Just double check you are not logged into the PlumGrid console, which is actually PlumGrid, PlumGrid. So there are two windows open. successfully created the first tenant let's just leave it as it is just we will go create additional users and then we will associate the users with different projects and that will take essentially the basic persona of a tenant yes will give you a very simple After you've created the project, the next one is go ahead and create users. And again, for simplicity's sake, for this exercise, we will just match the tenant username same as the project, so we can easily remember. So tenant one, password, we can keep it as PlumGrid, or however you want to do it. Then you drop down the menu, and you select the the tenant one. Role as a member, that's it. Let's do the same thing for user 2 and user 3 are the tenant 2 and then tenant 3. Change me on horizon. Okay, this is tenant 2, my typo. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Another thing we will look at is under the not under, under the admin, and you will look at uh, networks. Slow. You will see already an external network already created for this environment. 
As a cloud provider, what we have done it is we have created an external network. Okay, this is already made visible to all the tenants. Right? This is something we had done before, before starting this, right? And as when we go into the tenant, you guys, this is the only network uh, which is already done. Everything else now is going to be done from the tenant side. Okay, and before I log out and log in as a tenant, let's quickly take a look at the Plumgrade console. So again, in the test plan, and when you guys have more time to play with, again, it's a lot of explanation there uh, given over there, so it's going to be more clear to you, but just wanted to give you guys a quick view. The key aspect of our platform, which is you're going to be visualizing, is the concept of virtual domain. Think of virtual domain as a logical network for your tenant in an OpenStack environment. So as you create projects in OpenStack, you create tenants, and you create networks for them. On the Plumgrade side, we dynamically create the entirely isolated network for them. And inside the virtual domain <coughs> is where the topology of the tenants will be created. So now, if you see, you do not see any of the tenants created over here. These are some of the default ones which are already created. Okay. So now I'm going to log out. And I'm going to log in as tenant one. Couple of things. Again, you basically look at instances. We have not spawned any instances in OpenStack. You look at the network. And by the way, in case you guys are wondering, this is the this is an RDO distribution uh, based uh, instance. The network topology will only show an external network for you. Okay. So in OpenStack, when you want to go and bring up a tenant's three-tier topology, five-tier topology, or whatever, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and create networks for them. Okay. We will call it web. You can give a subnet name. It's optional. Let's also call it web. And you can select a private IP subnet here. Leave everything by, by default in a very simplistic way. Right? You know, create a subnet. The next one is uh, leave it as it is. We are by default DHCP is enabled on that subnet. So standards are going to come up. Sorry, the VMs. They will be uh, dynamically given the IP addresses. Just go ahead and create it. Is everybody with me so far? No. Okay. Where did I? Okay. So I'll slow down. And no, don't anything. Just If you are wondering where we are in the test plan, we are on the exercise number two. We have just created OpenStack tenants, right? Project users, project users. And now we are about to create three tier topology. Can I proceed or should I? Yes. Okay. Let's go create app. Also give it app subnet. Fifty five dot zero slash twenty four. 
you can pick any IP addressing because they're always going to be isolated to this tenant. They'll always be inside this virtual domain. You can, you know, don't worry about these. And create. Everybody with me? No? I just created an app network, right? And the last one I'll do is, I'll just do a, a DB, then I'll pause so that everybody is, you know, as. Sixty dot zero slash twenty four. Next, create. Okay. Yes. So I'm logged in as a tenant one. The I, you know, then I just go ahead and created three networks: web, app, and database. Just give them three different private subnetted, subnets, and that's it. And if you look at your topology in OpenStack Horizon, again, external network was already there. Then web, app, and database networks are the ones we just created. OK? Now let's look at, so I'm going to be at boot duty, as you guys know. This is a view of the PlumGrade user interface, the tenant one. The project that we created, dynamically we created a virtual domain for the, for the tenant. Again, this is a very, very basic uh, and idea is not to talk too much about the platform, but platform is capable of much more uh, interesting and uh, complicated topologies based on your use cases, right? So plum grade, plum grade. Yes. So, the if you just if your browser does not have an already tab, just open another tab, and all of you will have the same IP: HTTPS 10.0.3.253, and that should bring you to the to the login screen. It is in the actually in the user guide, but I will give you it is plum grid plum grid for simplicity. All lowercase. Yeah. So web network, app network, database network, all three of them are showing here. Everybody with me? So far so good? OK. And how much time we have here? OK. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and create a router. Because on 3 trailer topology, we want to have a router. And all three networks, we want them to connect to the router. In OpenStack, you First, create the networks. Then you go ahead. You go create a router. I'm going to call it router one. Okay. Then you click on the router uh, itself. Okay. Then you go ahead and add interfaces. And as you will uh, hit the add interface, look at the drop down menu, and you will see the all the network that you have created. So in my mind, I almost web app tier in our database. I always select the web one first. It automatically adds uh, an interface to it. Okay. Then you can go back. Do the same thing for for the app network. Click on Add Interface. Third one we left was the database. So far, so good. So you can click on the router. You will have field for add interfaces, and then select one interface at a time. Okay. Essentially, what you have already done is you have successfully connected a router. 
with all three subnets to it. And this is the OpenStack horizon view. You go to the Plum Grid console. Initially, it will look a little bit messy, and then we can arrange it, we can deploy it, and you can retain a permanent view of your, of your topology. This is very slow. So let me, I'll come back to this one when we have time. But let's go and uh, spawn some instances. So far, so good. Okay. Because we want to see some ping working. Nothing makes networking people more happy than see ping work, <laughs> right? So that is still the. <laughs> so let's uh, launch an instance. So again, I'm going to call it web1 as an instance. Again, these are very mini versions of the whole solution running on Amazon. Don't try to please select, select big images and everything like that. Right? Uh, performance is not we have many ways to test performance. This is not the avenue. Uh, and then you'll select one instance. Select, you're going to boot an image from image. Select Cirrus. And the next thing required in the when you launch an instance is you need to tell which subnet you're going to associate, which network you're going to associate this VM with. Okay? Click on plus. Click on launch. And now it's going to go through build stage, everything, and should be able to launch an instance. While it is doing it, let me see on the Plum Grid console, I can arrange the view a little bit better. Or I can do a right click. OK, so this is the router. This is our database. This is our app. This is our web. Right? This is the metadata. Again, if you're interested in topic deeper, we can explain why we dynamically create that. And I'm going to go ahead and click Deploy. You can arrange it however you visually want. Again, over here, the connecti connectivity to the internet is very slow. So the drag and drop is just taking forever. Otherwise, it's very, very fast. Right? OK, this VM is up. Now let's launch another instance. This is, again, on a 50.2 uh, uh, IP address on the web network. Let's create an instance on app. You guys able to follow? All right. Uh, tiny and and serious. <coughs> Why it does not? So the question is, why does the uh, the network topology in Plum Grid interface looks very similar to what we see in OpenStack? Okay, in this particular scenario, essentially what we are doing it is, you are creating the uh, the network services from OpenStack. We are actually are the one who are providing those network services and giving you the visual view of it. Now, platform again is a deeper topic. Platform has the capability that it allows you to create network topologies which are sometimes not even possible in OpenStack. Again, that's not the spirit, but in that scenario, when you look at the virtual domains on Plum Grid, they will look 
may be very different from what you will see in, in OpenStack. Okay. So, should we try to ping? All right. So the question is, do we incorporate plum grade menu inside the horizon? If I rephrase the question, the answer is no. Today there are two different uh, uh, UIs, for lack of a better word. I, frankly, in a, in a real world scenarios, a lot of customers actually are very CLI people, even on OpenStack. Horizon is, uh, is good for if you want to play in the lab or bring it up in a smaller scalar environment. When you are doing massive scalable deployments, they use a lot of automation, a lot of CLI, Neutron commands, Nova commands to, to do these things, right? So hence we haven't had anyone honestly a motivation to create integrate any GUI over here on this side. The orchestration. Yeah. So yeah. Plum Grid, what what you what is happening is the when you are creating these network, you see the DHCP, you see the bridge, you see the router. All of these functions are actually plum grade virtual network functions, which are fully distributed virtual network functions, which are enabling and creating this topology. So essentially, once you install OpenStack with plum grade, we take care of, we actually overtake all the networking that you are doing in the environment. You may still be creating the network from the OpenStack horizon, but it is within OpenStack solution, the network functions, the network services, the topology, these are all enabled by, by Plum Grid. So Plum Grid connects to the Neutron API capability. That is So the question is, how does Plum Grid sort of integrate in, in OpenStack? Yes, we basically replace the Neutron plugin with our own plugin, our own Neutron plugin, which has been upstreamed. And then that plugin talks to the platform, this, uh, the director, the, the GUI that you're seeing. And over there, all the configuration takes place. The data path is actually is our, our own uh, distributed data plane called IOVisor, which is installed on the on the compute node, right? And maybe for a minute, I may be digressing, but if I go into the zone view, this is a plum grid edge. It's an icon of our IOVisor. This is a distributed data plane, the kernel module which is running on the compute nodes. And that's a software that we install. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if we can. All right. The default username is Ceros Cubs when with a smiley face. Okay. Right here. Cubs win colon and the bracket smiley face. Right here. And the other machine which got the IP address was 50.2, 55.2, correct? <coughs> now, a happy network person can see the, the ping connectivity going from one VM to the other. Okay, Very basic look and feel for how networking, you, you do it in OpenStack with a matter of clicks. When you automate it with few scripts, you can just bring up, you're not touching the physical network, and here you go. On the Plum Grid user interface, we go into the virtual domain view, and we go to the virtual domain of the tenant. This is essentially the, the, the web network. You can even look at the interface, because the VM is on a web network. And you can track the, the traffic, which is going through. You want to monitor the stats. There are various other things that you can do. And every five seconds, as you can see, this counter will go up, because the poll every five seconds, all the packets, bits, bytes going through. Yeah. This is just one example. If you don't mind, can we take that one 
uh, I'll be happy to talk about it. That's a we're going to a very different topic altogether, and I'll be happy to talk about it after the after the class. So the question was about in our user interface, you will see a dynamically created network with metadata next to it. This one. Okay. Now, in terms of our lab exercise, we have completed exercise three as well. Now, for multi-tenant, the idea about multi-tenant essentially is you're going to have two different tenants, the same IP addresses. They're going to have no conflict, no issue with each other, because they're all inside this virtual network. And the moment they want to talk outside, they will have to go through an external network or through NAT. Right? What we will do it is we will log out. And I'm going to log in as. I, I named it tenant two, right? Same thing, and again, in spirit of time, I'll go a little bit, a little bit faster. Same network, web. The subnet we named it was web. The IP address we gave it was 192.168.50.0 slash 24. Okay. Again, in a cloud environment, in a private space, have as many tenants as you want, with IP addresses they need. No issue. We can do the same thing for app. Same overlapping IPs you can create, not a problem. Okay. Again, I will I will go ahead and just create an instance on the web just to show you, right, that you can have multiple overlapping IPs with instances. They have no issues uh, conflicting with each other. And before we leave, ideally, I want to definitely want to test the external connectivity and show how you can go outside the network. No. Unless you have created, uh, accidentally associated them to the same user somehow, right? If you have created like separate projects, separate users, and you will log in as a sec tenant two, you will only see the external network because that's the only one which was created by the cloud provider, shared with everyone. You will not see, you have no visibility, no idea that anybody else exists. That's correct. In a, in a very simplistic way. In OpenStack, again, you can have, you know, multiple projects can be associated with a tenant, but in a very simplistic way, that's the way you would want to think about it. Please. All of right now, what all, all I'm showing you, this is not to showcase or advertise anything on Plum Grid. All I'm showing you, everything this, how are you doing OpenStack networking, how we, when you install with this, how we enable 
the OpenStack functionality. Now, under the curtain, in terms of the scale, the distributed nature of our technology, the network functions, analytics, there are a lot of things that we are doing even right now, right? And then there are certain use cases where you want to build certain topologies. There are certain networking requirements which are not possible with OpenStack today, right? They are possible with our platform and with our API extensions. Okay. If we look at quickly the network topology, right? we will see only web and app. In this case, they are disconnected. What's going to happen? Okay. So let me go ahead and add a router between the two networks. Same thing as we did last time. Going to call it router two. And this is slow, but it's working. Let me add a web first. Let me add app. This, so far, this is a repetition of what we have done before, except with only two networks. Okay. Now, another thing is when you want to go ahead and connect, provide external connectivity, right? In OpenStack, again, you go to again the router. This is probably the exercise number five or six, right? And you go ahead and select gateway. So you're connecting this gateway now to the external network. Okay. Okay, network. Five more minutes, cooperate with me. External network, set gateway. Just to quickly show you the network topology, now this router is connected to the external network as well as the app and the web network we created. Okay. How you give your VMs external connectivity, right? You will select the the whatever VM you want, for example, web, right? And you will associate you will uh, in the network. You will go to the router. Yeah. On the router, there will be a button called Set Gateway. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll go back on the instances. Let's say we take the web VM, and if you want to give it an external, which is a public IP, right? The concept in OpenStack is called floating IP concept, right? So you want to go ahead and associate a floating IP address to this VM. And the steps are you come here, you click on plus. I want to first allocate. Allocate from where? Where from the external network that cloud provider had given you access to. You allocate it. And once the allocation is done, you will associate it. Okay. 
This is basically an external network that the cloud provider had created, right? And basically allowing the tenant networks to connect to it. Okay, and they give you a, a range. There is a range of IP addresses that belong to this network. Now you go ahead and associate a public IP from that network, and you can associate to the VM of your choice, the one that you want to have external connectivity, right? Essentially, it is NAT. People in the networking world are familiar with, right? This is uh, the tenant two topology. If I can quickly look at it. No, no, no. We don't use. This is a plum grade techno. I mean, plum grade data plane is the IO visor. We actually don't use OBS. We replace OBS with with what we have. Right. And this is a NAT. So previous topology is a router subnet. This is a NAT which is connecting to the external network. And I am five minutes over, but I will still take the liberty to try to ping from this VM to the outside. But before I do that need to manage the security policies. Okay. As an open stack, inside the tenant, you can ping each other. The default security rule allow you to connect. You are not allowed as a tenant by default to go out. So you need to go ahead and create, you know, allow the, the tenant to go out. Again, the test plan covers this in detail. But I'm just go ahead and add a couple of rules to allow ICMP to go through, in and out. OK, come on. Request and access, and we'll provide you the access with all this information, so you can see it. And if there are questions in regards to the technology and everything, uh, we'll be more than happy to do a deeper discussion about all the VNS, IOWISER, and what not. It's happening here. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is on Wednesday we have in the afternoon uh, sessions of interactive intelligence with Scrum and a couple of panels uh, where you can learn more about like how people have used open stack networking at scale like going beyond whatever the traditional default plugins have been uh, uh, people building complex technology uh, topologies with virtual domains and then allocating it according to security policies they need so all that information will be uh, discussed on wednesday uh, afternoon you can look at the sponsored sessions and in regards to ours, uh, uh, we also do OpenStack Marketplace training. Uh, it's every month. So you can go in there and register for it, and we'll do a web-based uh, online training also. Okay. So Again, quickly recap. Sorry for being over. This is an arm showing a VM, which we gave it a public IP. A.A.A.A is a Google's DNS server, so it's able to go all the way to the internet. You can go and look at in our Plum Grid console. NAT network function, you will see NAT entries, packets going in and out, many, many other things. Sorry. And the coolest thing is the IO visor, please look it up, is actually a mainstream part of Facebook protocol. So please, so it is a very cool technology. So again, reminder, all of you who are here, we have your badges scanned. By Wednesday, you will have an invite from us to sign up for a three-day. Same test plan, more time. Feel free to reach out to us for more questions. Thank you, and happy to take any questions.